Today we're diving into one of Earth's most incredible mysteries, the Mariana Trench. This isn't just a deep hole in the ocean, it's like the Mount Everest of the deep sea, but in reverse. Imagine plunging down 36,000 feet deeper than Everest is tall. That's the Challenger Deep for you, the deepest known point in our oceans. It's so deep that if you were down there, the pressure would be like having 50 jumbo jets squishing you. Talk about an extreme underwater squeeze. Now you might think nothing could possibly live in such an intense place, but guess what? Life finds a way. The Mariana Trench is teeming with creatures that could be straight out of a sci-fi movie. We're talking about weird fish like the Hadal snailfish and unique microorganisms that don't just survive, but thrive in the pitch dark, crushing depths and freezing cold. These animals are the ultimate survivalists, adapting to a world that would seem totally alien to us. The journey to explore this eerie abyss is like something out of an adventure novel. The first people to reach the Challenger Deep were Jacques Picard and Don Walsh in 1960, cruising down in the Trieste. And then in 2012, filmmaker James Cameron himself took the plunge in his Deep Sea Challenger. Today we've got robots and remote operated vehicles doing the dangerous work, diving down to bring back secrets from this mysterious world. But why should we care about this deep, dark trench? Well, it's a crucial puzzle piece in understanding our planet. The trench is a subduction zone, basically a giant geological recycling bin where one of Earth's plates slides under another. This process is essential for our planet's life cycle. Plus, the trench is home to hydrothermal vents, these underwater geysers that could hold clues to how life started on Earth. Looking ahead, there's still so much we don't know about the Mariana Trench. Future explorations could reveal new creatures, unseen geological wonders, and maybe even answer big questions about life in extreme environments. Studying this place isn't just about satisfying our curiosity. It could help us understand if life could exist in the extreme conditions of other planets. Some folks think of the Mariana Trench as just a dark, lifeless pit, but they couldn't be more wrong. It's a vibrant, albeit bizarre, ecosystem full of mysteries waiting to be solved. Exploring the trench is like exploring another world, right here on our own planet. It's one of the last true frontiers, a place that challenges our understanding of life and our planet, a deep-sea enigma calling out for adventurers and dreamers to uncover its secrets. The deepest and most mysterious part of our oceans is like entering a world from another dimension. This place, my friends, is where the giants of the sea call home. I'm talking about deep sea gigantism, a phenomenon as fascinating as it is mind-boggling. Let's embark on a journey to uncover the secrets of these enormous creatures lurking in the abyss. Picture this, the giant squid, a creature of legend, with tentacles as long as a bus, lurking in the darkness of the deep sea. And it's not just squids, we're talking about colossal amphipods and other invertebrates that grow to sizes you'd think were straight out of a storybook. In the deep sea, bigger is the norm, not the exception. So why are these creatures so massive? There are a few theories floating around. First, there's the idea that the chilly waters down there encourage a larger body size. It's like wearing a big cozy coat to keep warm, but in biological terms. Then there's the oxygen-rich water, which might allow for these larger sizes as oxygen is crucial for all that metabolic jazz that keeps creatures alive. Another theory? Well, in the deep sea, it's not like you can just swim over to a cafe for a snack. Food is scarce, so being bigger means you can store more energy and travel farther to find a meal. And don't forget the immense pressure in the trench. It's possible that being larger helps these animals withstand the squeeze of the deep. The adaptations of these deep-sea giants are straight out of a sci-fi film. Many of them light up the pitch-black ocean with their own bioluminescent glow. It's like having built-in headlights. And the pressure down there is enough to crush a submarine, but these creatures are cruising along, thanks to their specialized bodies. Exploring this underwater world is no easy feat. The conditions are extreme, so every mission down there is a big deal. It's a place where we're constantly finding new species and learning about the strange ways they live. And let's talk about sea monsters. You know, like the Kraken from the old sailor tales. These legends might have been inspired by real encounters with deep sea giants. Imagine a sailor long ago, coming face to face with a creature like the giant squid. That'd be a story to tell for generations. As we continue to explore the Mariana Trench, who knows what other secrets we'll uncover. This place is a frontier for science, a realm of unknown giants waiting in the depths. So what's the deal with deep-sea gigantism? 
It's like Mother Nature's own experiment in scaling up. In the murky, high-pressure depths of the trench, some creatures grow to massive sizes, way larger than their cousins in shallower waters. We're talking about the giants of the deep, like the legendary giant squid, whose tentacles could easily wrap around a whale, and the colossal isopods, which look like they've come straight out of a sci-fi flick. But why do these creatures get so big? There are a few theories cooking in the pot. One idea is about temperature. In the icy depths of the trench, being bigger might help conserve heat. Then there's the scarcity of food. With meals being a rare luxury in the deep sea, larger creatures can store more energy and travel longer distances for food. And let's not forget oxygen. The cold waters down there are rich in dissolved oxygen, which might support the larger body sizes of these deep sea dwellers. And the predators, they're fewer down in the deep, so species can grow larger without constantly looking over their shoulders. It's a different world down there, a place where size matters in a whole new way. Now let's talk about the stars of the show. The giant isopods are like the tanks of the ocean floor, armored and oversized. Then there are the giant tube worms, living near hydrothermal vents, relying on the Earth's geothermal energy. And of course, the mysterious squids, the real-life krakens, elusive and seldom seen, but absolutely fascinating. But exploring this world is no walk in the park. Every dive, whether by humans in submersibles or by remote operated machines, is a venture into one of the most extreme environments on Earth. These rare glimpses we get of these creatures are priceless, each one adding a piece to the vast puzzle of deep sea life. Studying these giants isn't just about satisfying our curiosity, it gives us insights into the dynamics of deep sea ecosystems. It's a glimpse into a world that operates by a whole different set of rules. And the adaptations these creatures have developed to survive in such extremes, that's a lesson in resilience and survival that goes beyond just biology. Now diving into the deep blue to explore the ocean's big-time residents, we're talking about marine giants, from real colossal creatures to the stuff of legends. The ocean's got its own set of rules when it comes to size, and some of its inhabitants are, well, literally off the scales. Let's start with the superstar of the deep, the giant squid. These massive invertebrates can stretch up to 43 feet. That's like stacking three cars end to end. They've got eyes as big as dinner plates, perfect for spotting light in the deep, dark ocean. But despite their size, they're super elusive and there's still so much we don't know about them. Then there's the colossal squid, the heavyweight champion of the deep. Even bigger than the giant squid, these guys can reach up to 46 feet. They've got these rotating hooks on their tentacles that make them formidable predators, but they're also on the menu for some, like the sperm whale. Now let's talk about the Kraken, the mythical sea monster that's been the stuff of sailors' nightmares for centuries. Originating from Scandinavian folklore, this legendary creature is often depicted as a monstrous squid or octopus, taking down ships and causing havoc. It's thought that real giant cephalopods inspired these tales, showing just how much the ocean's mysteries have captivated humans over the ages. The ocean's got more giants up its sleeve. Take the whale shark, for instance, the largest fish in the sea, reaching lengths of 40 feet or more. But despite their size, they're gentle giants, feeding on tiny plankton. Then there's the giant oarfish, a real-life sea serpent stretching up to 36 feet. And don't forget the lion's mane jellyfish with tentacles that can stretch longer than a blue whale. Studying these marine giants is no easy feat. They live in parts of the ocean that are tough to reach, like deep trenches or remote open waters. And sightings, they're as rare as a winning lottery ticket, making it tough to learn about their behavior and ecology. In the end, these oceanic giants are more than just big fish or cephalopods in a big pond. They're symbols of the unexplored and mysterious aspects of our world's oceans, a reminder of how much we've yet to discover in the vast blue depths. So, next time you're gazing out at the sea, just imagine the giants lurking beneath those waves. It's a whole other world down there. Journey with us to Titan, Saturn's largest moon and a celestial body that has long captivated scientists and space enthusiasts alike. Titan is unique in our solar system. It's the only moon known to have a dense atmosphere and much like Earth, it has stable bodies of surface liquid. However, unlike Earth, Titan's lakes, rivers and seas are composed of methane and ethylene, not water. This presents a tantalizing question. Could Titan, with its thick atmosphere and liquid methane seas, harbor life? The conditions on Titan are harsh by Earth standards, with surface temperatures averaging around minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Yet life, as we are beginning to understand, can be incredibly resilient and adaptable. Imagining life in the methane seas of Titan, Saturn's mysterious moon, invites us into a world of fascinating speculation. If life exists in these frigid hydrocarbon-rich waters, it would likely be vastly different from the life forms we know on Earth. The extreme conditions of Titan, with temperatures plunging to minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit and seas of liquid methane and ethane, create an environment where only the most adaptable and specialized organisms could survive. One possible inhabitant of Titan's methane seas could be the methanosaurs, hypothetical creatures that have evolved to swim in the methane and ethane lakes and rivers. Unlike Earth's aquatic life, which relies on water as a solvent for biological processes, these beings might use methane in a similar manner. Their cellular structure would be incredibly different from Earth's life forms, possibly based on a silicon or arsenic biochemistry, as opposed to the carbon-based DNA of terrestrial organisms. This alternative biochemistry would be a result of Titan's distinct environment and the availability of elements. These methanosaurs could have evolved ways to extract energy from Titan's limited resources. One possibility is that they use a form of chemosynthesis, deriving energy from the reaction of methane with other chemicals in Titan's environment. This process could be analogous to some extremophiles on Earth that thrive in environments devoid of sunlight, relying on chemical reactions to produce energy. Another intriguing possibility is the existence of methane medusae, jellyfish-like creatures floating in the colder upper layers of the methane seas. These beings could have developed a form of buoyancy control, adjusting their internal methane levels to float or sink, similar to how Earth's jellyfish control their position in water. Their feeding mechanism might involve filtering organic compounds from the methane, analogous to plankton feeding organisms in Earth's oceans. In the deeper, darker parts of the methane seas, we might find creatures akin to Earth's deep sea organisms. These titanite leviathans could be enormous, slow-moving beings, conserving energy in an environment where resources are scarce. They might use bioluminescence not for communication as on Earth, but as a way to attract or detect prey in the pitch-black depths. The adaptation of sensory organs in Titan's sea creatures would also be a fascinating area of speculation. Lacking sunlight, vision might be less important, and these creatures could have developed sophisticated sonar or vibration-sensitive organs to navigate, communicate and find food in the murky depths of the methane seas. The potential existence of microscopic life in Titan's seas also raises intriguing possibilities. These microorganisms, or methanomicrobes, could form the base of a unique food web, filling a role similar to phytoplankton in Earth's oceans. Their existence would be a crucial component of Titan's ecosystem, supporting larger methane-based life forms. Embarking deeper into the theoretical ecosystems of Titan's methane seas, we encounter the concept of the Titan Leviathans. These hypothetical beings are envisioned as the rulers of the deep, colossal creatures that could dwarf even the largest earthly whales. In the frigid, pressure-laden depths of Titan's methane oceans, these leviathans would need to possess extraordinary adaptations to thrive. The physiology of a Titan leviathan could be a marvel of alien biology. In an environment devoid of sunlight and composed of liquid methane, traditional Earth-like respiration wouldn't be possible. Instead, these creatures might rely on a unique form of chemical respiration. This could involve extracting energy from methane or other hydrocarbons present in Titan's seas, possibly utilizing the moon's rich organic compounds as a source of nourishment. One could imagine these leviathans having thick, insulated skins or exoskeletons to protect them from the extreme cold. Their bodies might be streamlined for efficient movement through the dense methane seas with large, fin-like appendages to propel them through the liquid. These appendages would need to be incredibly strong yet flexible to navigate the high-density liquid methane and ethane. Given the lack of light in Titan's depths, the Titan leviathans would likely rely on other senses to hunt and navigate. They might use a form of echolocation or vibration sensitivity, emitting and detecting sounds or movements in the methane to find prey, avoid obstacles and communicate with each other. This sensory adaptation would be crucial in an environment where visual cues are virtually non-existent. In terms of diet, these leviathans could be the top predators in Titan's marine food chain, preying on smaller methane-based creatures. They might employ methods of hunting that are entirely alien to us, 
For instance, they could release clouds of chemical agents to disorient or incapacitate their prey, or use elaborate traps formed from their own bodies like luring appendages. The reproductive habits of the Titan Leviathans would also be a subject of intrigue. They might lay eggs in the warmer shallows of the methane seas, or give birth to live young. The care and nurturing of their offspring could involve unique behaviors, adapted to the challenges of life in a methane environment. Social structures among these hypothetical creatures could be complex, with group hunting, communication through low-frequency sounds, and even possible forms of methane sea songs, analogous to the vocalizations of Earth's whales. In the twilight zone where Titan's methane seas meet its icy crust, a unique ecosystem might exist, home to hypothetical organisms known as the shadow swimmers. These speculative beings would be adapted to life in a world of extreme contrasts, the interface between the frigid methane seas and the relatively warmer ice. Shadow swimmers might possess the ability to transition between solid and liquid methane states, thriving in the slushy mixture at the IC boundary. Their physiology could include specialized appendages or body structures enabling them to cling to the underside of the ice, or to propel themselves through the semi-solid methane slush. These adaptations would be crucial for navigating and hunting in this unique environment. Bioluminescence could be a key feature of these creatures. In the dimly lit world under Titan's ice, light production might serve multiple purposes, as a means of communication, to attract prey, or even to confuse predators. Unlike Earth's bioluminescent organisms, which often use light to attract mates or signal distress, Titan's shadow swimmers might use bioluminescence as their primary means of interaction. In terms of diet, the shadow swimmers could be omnivores or carnivores, feeding on smaller organisms that inhabit the ice methane interface or scavenging organic material trapped within the ice. Their feeding habits might include a form of ice grazing, where they consume microorganisms and organic particles within the ice layer, or active predation on other methane-based life forms. The shadow swimmers' reproductive strategies would likely be as unique as their environment. They might lay eggs in the warmer crevices of the ice or give live birth to young, which would need to be adept at surviving in the harsh conditions of Titan from the moment of birth. The mysteries of Titan, with its alien landscapes and the potential for life, have not only intrigued scientists but have also given rise to various conspiracy theories. Some of these theories suggest that space agencies and governments have already discovered signs of life on Titan but are withholding the information from the public. Proponents point to the limited data released from missions to Titan and the slow progress in sending follow-up missions as potential evidence of a cover-up. Another popular theory speculates that Titan's methane seas and ice structures could be harboring advanced alien civilizations or outposts hidden from our detection methods. The idea posits that these hypothetical beings could be using Titan as a base for observing Earth or as a waypoint in their interstellar journeys. Some conspiracy theorists go further, suggesting that unusual features observed on Titan's surface, like the so-called magic islands observed by the Cassini spacecraft, are evidence of alien activity. These features, which appeared and disappeared in Titan's seas, have been explained by scientists as likely being caused by natural phenomena such as methane bubbles or floating ice. However, in the world of conspiracy theories, such explanations are often viewed with skepticism. While these theories are not supported by scientific evidence and are often based on misinterpretations or selective readings of available data, they highlight the fascination and curiosity that Titan inspires. The moon's enigmatic nature and the tantalizing possibility of life make it a perfect canvas for the imagination, both in scientific speculation and in the realm of conspiracy theories. As we plan future missions to Titan, like the Dragonfly mission set to launch in 2027, we may finally uncover the secrets of this mysterious moon, shedding light on its true nature and possibly on the existence of life beyond Earth. Until then, Titan remains a source of wonder, speculation and intrigue, capturing our imagination and our desire to explore the unknown. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.